Hello and welcome to the organizer video. Now the organizer is kind of like the navigator's big brother because unlike navigator which is pinned down the side of your document the organizer can work in full screen mode so that when you're looking at the overview of your novel it can give you a ton of visual feedback. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so I'm open in one of my works in progress. Uh, the Navigator here is open. And, um, and while it's a great tool, it does have its limitations, one of which is it's permanently fixed down the side of your document. Um, and it's a little bit of a restricted view on the information it can give you, which is where the organizer comes in. So to turn on the organizer, you would click this icon and straight away the organizer opens in a full tab of its own. Okay, so since this uh, video was made, Papyrus Authors had a new menu added called Author. And this has everything that you need to create your book in one place. So you can now also open the organizer from this uh, menu. It also has an info column, uh, very much like the one in the navigator that can be turned on and off with this icon. And down this column here, it shows you all the chapters and scenes and events. At the moment, I've got all the elements within those turned off, elements like research, uh, think board, and so on. So I'm going to gradually turn those on. So if I turn on the research, you can see that the research is instantly displayed. Think board. Think board, these are um, think board bubbles or groups that I've created, then associated with those chapters or scenes. Events are events within the timeline and notes and comments. So with all the elements turned on, you can see them now all within this main column. Um, now I'm going to work through these columns one at a time and just explain what they are. Abstract is really um, what you would use for things like summaries or maybe synopses of each um, uh, scene. So if I highlight this scene here, I could either enter the synopses there or enter it from up here. So I go, this is abstract. And then when I press apply, you can see that it appears there. And like I say, I can, end, I can, I can also edit it from here. So I just deleted that text. If I click out and press apply, it removes the text. So these are, this is the abstract column for showing your synopses and so on. Threads, this relates to the threads that you've created in within your timeline. Um, as, as I've said in, uh, in another video, um, I only ever create three threads, which is the main thread for the main story, a scenes thread, and an events thread. And depending on what thread your chapter or scene appears in, will be denoted by the color of the, the um, diamond here. Okay, so if you've got 10 threads, all 10 threads would appear here. Statistics is the word count associated with the chapter and the scenes. So if you select a chapter, that tells you the overall word count within the entire chapter, and each scene gives you a breakdown of the words in each scene, which would total the word count for the chapter. These icons within uh, the status column, that would refer to the status of each chapter or scene. So um, you can assign an icon um, of your choosing. You could Maybe if it's in revision, you might choose a certain type of icon or um, if it's unfinished or needs editing. And to add that icon, you can simply uh, right click on any chapter or scene, go to status and you can add uh, whatever icon you want. So needs research and it will appear here. So this column denotes the status of your scene and um, column. Progress relates to the word count determined by the overall word count you've set. So if I've, I, uh, let's say I've set 100,000 um, word count for the entire book, it will tell me how many words, I'll just increase the size of that column a little bit. It will tell me how many words there are up to this point and the percentage 
towards being finished. So as I scroll down, you can see the word count increasing to 41,000 and it's 51% finished. Characters, again, relates to the characters, uh, uh, scenes, uh, sorry, characters, locations and items that appear within any uh, given chapter or scene. Times uh, relates to the timeline entries created for each one of these chapters and scenes, all of which can be created here. So if you want to create um, timeline entries here, you would, uh, which I won't go over because I've covered this in other videos, you can create those timeline entries here. If you come up to the top of the column and you right click, you can then say what columns you want to appear or not appear. So for instance, if I don't want times to appear, I would simply untick it and times would disappear. If I right click it again and re-tick re it, the times will appear. Depending on the columns that you tick, or sorry, right click on, it will give you more um, options of what will appear in that column. So if I right click on statistics, I can also include paragraph count. If I right click again, I could go page count and so on. Again, this only applies to certain columns. So if I right click on the progress, uh, I can include things time last changed. And again, I can resize these columns to show just by dragging and dropping, uh, increase the size so that I can see more details. So if I untick time last change, that column shrinks and I could resize the column. Again, for uh, characters, if I right click on characters, I can select uh, show full names instead of just their letters. I can choose not to show locations and so on. So by right clicking on each column, you get more options for how that column is displayed. Okay. You can also reposition the columns just by dragging and dropping. So if I wanted times up near threads, because the two are related, I could drag it by uh, holding down my left mouse button and dragging it across so that now threads and times, which are all relating to the timeline, are closer together. I might want progress next to statistics because the two are sort of related. Um, and I might just want status at the end. Okay, so again, they can all be repositioned and resized. And if I close the info column, it gives you a little bit more room. While I'm talking of the uh, info columns, I'll open it back up. And as I mentioned, you can create timeline entries from here, but with this icon, you can also create characters, items, and locations, which again, I won't go over at the moment because I covered that in another video, but I just wanted to point out that it could be created from this point. You can also resize the info bar so that um, it's bigger to work within. Now, these two uh, windows here, uh, refer to characters, items and locations that are available and the ones that are mentioned within the chapter or scene. So if you were planning out to mention, say, uh, Captain Michael McAllister, you could drag it to this window and it would show that I had planned to uh, mention this character, but as of yet hadn't mentioned them. If I go to a different uh, scene, you can see it shows then who has been mentioned within that scene. Okay, and if I click through, you can see that changing. Okay, so I'm just going to close the info column again. You can also create things using the organizer. You can create uh, new chapters, new scenes, new events, and you can also delete all of those things. So if I go back to, uh, I'm going to go to the last uh, scene, and if I go back to the main document now, it will have navigated me to the last scene in the book. I'll just close down the navigator. I'm going to insert a page break, because I always insert page breaks between chapters. This is just a personal thing. I'm going to insert a page break. I'm going to go back to the organizer and I'm going to go new chapter. 
and I'm going to make sure that I've selected chapter 15 because I want the new chapter after 15. If I've got 12 selected, it would place the chapter in between 12 and 13. So I'm selecting chapter 15 and I'm going to go new chapter. If I scroll down, I can then name that chapter 16. Enter. And when I go back to the main document, you can see it's created chapter 16. OK, but the real beauty of the organizer or, or what I really like about it is these tabs can be dragged off to another monitor. So if you're working on two monitors, you can have the organizer open on one monitor. So you can be working on the back end of your book on one monitor and the front end. In other words, your work in progress on another monitor. So I'm just going to pause and I'm going to do that now. Okay, so now we're in dual monitor mode. So I'm just going to grab hold of the organizer tab and drag it onto my second monitor. So now, as you can see, I have the main document on one monitor and the organizer on the other. So I can be working on the back end of this book as I'm working on the main document. So for instance, if I hit enter here and I set that to um, standard text, just because obviously that's where my main um, entry is going to go. I could create a new scene from the organizer and it will appear here. So I could go new scene, scroll down and I'll go uh, scene one. And as soon as I hit enter, it's created that scene in real time, if you like, ready for me to work on. Same thing again, if I open up the info columns and I work on the timeline, it will instantly create the timeline entry, which will appear everywhere within uh, Papyrus. So if I open up the organizer, uh, uh, sorry, the, the navigator, anything that I create in the organizer will instantly appear in the main document and in the... Um, the navigator. So for instance, if I was just to create an event, so I'll scroll down and I'll go, I'll just write test and I go enter. You can see that the event immediately appeared in the main document. It immediately appeared in the navigator. And if I was to open up the timeline, it would have instantly appeared in the timeline as well. OK, so everything synchronizes instantly the minute you create it. And if you're lucky enough to have two screens, you can then have the organizer on one. So you can be controlling everything uh, as you're working on your main document. All right. OK, so there you have it. That was the organizer video. I think you'll agree that the organizer is a great tool for working on the back end of your book as you're working more creatively on the front end of your book. If you're lucky enough to have multiple monitors like me, then having the organizer on one screen while you're writing on, the, on another becomes a really immersive experience. It, feel, it genuinely feels like you're inside the book because as you're tinkering with the mechanics, whether it's creating chapters, scenes, characters, event, or timeline entries, you're being more creative on the front end, where you're actually creating your world, where you're creating your novel. So whether you've got dual monitors or not, the organizer is a brilliant tool for the back end of your book. It gives you tons and tons of information. Everything you could possibly want to know about your book appears in the organizer. So until next time, I'll see you later.